Let's start with what I'm seeing as positive news in the sports, business, politics, cultural world as the Atlanta Braves recently won the World Series for Major League Baseball, even though I am not particularly an Atlanta Braves fan, I am an Angels fan. This is good news because it kind of gives that middle finger to the MLB commissioner and those that pressured him to call for the move of the All-Star game this past summer from Atlanta to Denver, Colorado, seemingly under false pretenses and thus unfairly punishing the Atlanta area last minute after years of planning for this event. Now, businesses in there in the area were punished in particular and hit the hardest because and, and it's for something they didn't even do or wasn't even their fault. Adding to the already tough year for businesses where that week and weekend of all-star events was going to be bringing a lot of foot traffic to the area and it was just pulled out from under them basically at the last second. Now the move of the all-star game and all-star week events was said to be in response to the voting laws passed in Georgia where the Biden administration and others, including former candidate for governor of Georgia, Stacey Abrams, who has kind of become this face of voter rights and voter integrity, whatever you want to call it. They've been framing this law in Georgia as restricting voting access to American citizens. I think I remember back in the summer, they even tried to compare it to Jim Crow law, but we're going to get to that in a few seconds. But upon further investigation, you will find that the move to Colorado from Georgia for this for these events based on voting laws is a little suspect when you break it down. And we're going to get into a few of the metrics here right now. So according to Fox 5 Atlanta, on the voter ID front, in Colorado, ID is already required to vote in person. And if you first time vote by mail, you have to, you may be required to provide a photocopy of your ID. ID is also requ required to register to vote in Colorado and can you can register up to election day, whereas in Georgia, the deadline to register is October 4th. And in this new Georgia law that they, they just added the requirement to attach a photocopy of an ID to vote by mail. Now, this is the first head scratcher in the whole narrative when hearing critics supporting a move to Colorado of the All-Star Game under this quote unquote less restrictive voter law argument. And on this metric in particular, the only difference is really the registration deadline prior to an election. So it appears that Georgia is actually catching up to what Colorado has been doing in previous election for, for years at this point. So the next metric was on early voting and the Georgia Election Integrity Act of 2021, which is the law that's been surrounded by controversy in the summer, actually increased access to two Saturdays and two optional Sundays up from one required Saturday previously in early voting. Now the runoff election process in Georgia, the early voting with that was changed from starting the fourth Monday prior to the runoff election to no later than the second Monday prior, but as soon as possible. So they basically just removed the mandate of starting the fourth Monday prior, but they can still do it if it's possible or even earlier. Now, according to Fox 5 Atlanta, Governor Kemp claims Georgia has 17 early voting in person days compared to 15 in Colorado. I'm guessing he's pointing that out to kind of show how we actually aren't more restrictive than Colorado. Again, countering the narrative against the Georgia voting laws and poking yet another hole in the critics arguments. It makes you wonder, did they, did they even think this through or did they just think we are all stupid? But on the vote by mail and no excuse absentee voting, both si both states allow for vote by mail without an excuse. But Georgia actually reduced the time prior to elections to ask for an absentee ballot from 180 days to 78, and it must be received 11 days prior to election, prior to the election day. Now Georgia also in this law prohibited mass mailing of absentee ballots to all registered voters without them requesting it first whereas Colorado sends a ballot by mail to everyone, but still must be received by election day at 7 p.m. Now, as far as drop boxes goes, Colorado has one for every 9,400 active registered voters, whereas Georgia is one for every 100,000 voters or has enough for the number of advanced voting locations. 
And this law also moves Georgia's Dropbox program from an emergency use basis to a permanent fixture of law. Finally, on the polling place restriction stance or front, the Georgia law prohibits handing out material food or drink to those waiting in line within 150 feet of polling places or within 25 feet of those standing in line, although election workers are still allowed to do so. Now in Colorado, they have some what they call comfort teams who are allowed to offer food and drinks to voters in line as long as they are not campaigning within 100 feet of the polling place. So there was a precedent set in Colorado already for restricting activity near polling places to ensure a free and fair election. And all the outrage seemed to be pointed at the new Georgia law, but this shouldn't be that big of a deal because I'd hope being offered water or a snack in line to vote is not a driving force behind voting for someone. But anyways, I digress. So these metrics show very small differences between Colorado and Georgia laws regarding voting. And it's not making the critics of the Georgia voting law look very good and definitely was not enough for the move of an entire American tradition out of a state last minute. Now, that was kind of my best reasoning for this move was basically trying to attack an American pastime, which has been a common theme lately. Of course, they're not going to come out and say we're moving the all-star game because we want the integrity of this game to be blah, blah, blah. But besides them hoping they people would blindly believe them for their reasoning to capitalize on this, which backfired. So the best reason I can think for why they did this besides uh, incompetence, stupidity, or them thinking we're stupid is they actually want to hit at an American tradition. Now that backfire at the time, back in the summer, has now turned into a giant middle finger to those who made that move happen because... The team from Atlanta, which plays in the stadium in the area where they were going to have the All-Star events, not only made it to the playoffs of the Major League Baseball 2021 season, they got into the division series, they won, they went to the championship series, they won, and they went to the World Series and made it basically to game six and won in Houston, but they got three games in Atlanta. And so... The place where other where the all-star was supposed to take place in the stadium where only one or two things were supposed to happen in the actual stadium now these businesses and the area around it that got hurt in the summer i hope that that month of extra games in the season made up for and then some for the the void that the all-star game created in the summer and around the ballpark assuming that all the businesses survived the year of turbulence but i hope that all those people affected by that move Remember that when they vote next year in 2022 and beyond.